Everything's going well. All present and correct, I do believe. Anyway, hello, Jonathan. Hello, Doug. It's lovely to see you. Hello, Facebook. You will, of course, see that we come upon people who will write through us anyway. Our only answer to this is practice what we're practicing all the time here, which is to be nothing. Step out of their way and let them go by as if they were something flowing through you. Spirits of the dead, spirits of the living, kindred welcome. And please feel free to step a little closer so that I don't have to shout. And our Goose Samurai will keep an eye on the bikes. Welcome everybody, both here live at the gates and to the Zoom vigil with Jackie leading the Zoom. Um, over the magic of Natalie's phone. Welcome to the 236th consecutive monthly vigil. We have stood here at the gates since June 2004. We did an awful lot more work before that, but a regular monthly vigil has occurred here every single month for almost 20 years. We come here to honour the outcast. We also refresh and renew the shrine and we reclaim the goose's secret history. The wordage of which is here. And the reason why we come and we stand to honour the outcast is as it's always been. We are standing where we've always stood on the outside. People ask us, why don't we go on the inside? When we started vigiling, there was no inside. There was a desolate nothing, an abandoned site. Um, and so we started on the outside. And what we were very consciously doing was we were making ourselves the outsiders. We were making ourselves the outcast so that the people on the other side of the gates were the ones who were on the inn. There are still 15,000 people buried on the inn. Every single one of them is an outcast of some sort. A person who lived in the 1700s and 1800s here in this area of London, it was called the Mint in those days. It was one of the poorest criminal and disease ridden areas of London. And this was one of the pauper's graveyards. Every single person, woman, child, 60% of the people buried here are children under 16, and men, of course. All of them outcasts from society, being the lowest of the low, not being able to afford proper funerals. They might have rented a coffin to be carried here from their hovel and then put in the ground and then the, the coffin goes back to rent again to somebody else. 
We also remember, because the story of Crossbones goes back a lot further than that, we also honour we also honour the Winchester geese, who, if they're not actually buried here, they are buried somewhere, and we hold their memory here, because the records say that they were buried in a single woman's burial ground. They were the women who worked in the brothels of the medieval times from the 1100s for 500 years, where the Bishop of Winchester was the landlord of this area, he took everybody's rents. If anybody did anything wrong, they paid their fines to the bishop. And the bishop had ordinances, rules. They weren't written by the bishop. Actually, the first set of rules was written by the king's... Um... <clears throat> Somebody? An assistant to the king. And he wrote the first set of rules. They were called the ordinances. Rockwell. Yes, but what was he, not who was he? And it wasn't Thomas Cromwell. It was Beckett. Oh, Beckett, Thomas Beckett, same Thomas Beckett. Before he was saint. And if the women did things wrong, they were fined. If the brothels did things wrong, they were fined. All the money went into the pockets of the bishop. So the bishop earned a good deal out of the women that worked in the brothels. When those women died, they weren't allowed a Christian burial. And they were thrown away into an unconsecrated burial, which is believed to be crossbones. So we are standing on land that we know the history of at least a thousand years from the 1100s. Of course, the history of this area, as we know now, due to the amazing digs that they've been making on the other side of the development, it goes right back to Roman times. The story of crossbones goes right back to when the armies brought the baggage trains and brought their own prostitutes with them. The women who worked in that line of business have been on the south bank of the Thames for 2,000 years. Part of the Goose's secret history is most of us don't know anything about this information. This is why it's secret. What the Crossbones Graveyard shows us is the history of London as seen from the bottom up. There's so many new people here tonight, and everybody, you're very, very welcome to come. I see a few old friendly faces, and I see a few new friendly faces, and some faces that actually look as if I might actually freak out, reach out and steal your soul. Let me assure you before we start that the only spirit that will take over you is your spirit. We, I, the magical collective, the goose has got no interest in stealing anything from you. We are all here for this amazing, radical act of sacred profanity. And what we do while we're here is we, we do frankly, a lot of things that we would never dream of doing when we're facing that way, when we're facing out into the world. What we do when we come here, we don't shut out the world. How can you shut out the world? We're out in the open. We can hear everything that's going on. We can hear the noises of the trains going past. We can hear the noises of the cars and the sounds, they rise and they fall away. And this rising and falling away is a thing that we use in the practice that we do here. Everything we do is practice. We practice shining emptiness. We practice um, radical acceptance. We practice all sorts of things. And we express ourselves 
through five, four or five. If we count what I'm doing now as one, then it's five. Um, very simple rituals. And during those rituals, we practice not being individual people, not being you and you and you and mentally me, but being just little portions of time. We are each of us a little spark of light, and this is what we practice. We don't turn our backs on the noise. We let the noise rise and fall round us as if we were invisible, as if we were nothing, and let that flow through us. The same goes for some of the things that we say here. Some of the things that we say, and not do, but some of the things that we say might be quite shocking to you, might startle you. If they do, of course, when you go home, give it all a good thinking about. But when you're here, try not to attach it to things. Try to just let them come and go like the noises that rise and fall. I personally have been standing at these gates for at least 15 years, almost every single day. And I can't tell you the amount of times I've stood with a face like a lemon thinking, oh, I don't like that much. Right or wrong, it doesn't matter. But what the effect it has had on me is while I'm busy thinking I don't like that very much, what other people are saying and the other jewels that people are offering from the goose's history is gone. Because I'm so busy thinking about how much I don't like that thing that's in the past, I'm missing all the lovely things that are happening in the present. So... Let things flow through us. This is what we practice as we do our individual rituals. I am part of the magical collective. Guy over there is part of the magical collective, and he and I are presenting the vigil to you tonight. Um, but really and truly, it's the people who attend that make it and join in. I've always got a list of things to say and I'm always a bit worried that I might have forgotten them, but that's another thing that don't hold on to. So, so we're going to start our first ritual. And the first ritual is called Holding the Light. Open the heart. Do we have a child? Would anybody like to volunteer to hold the light for us? Be the physical light holder. Do come. No, I did do remember your name, but I don't remember it. Karen's going to hold the light for us. Now, what we do just for one single minute, marked at the beginning by a bell and at the end by a bell. Somebody, I'm not sure who said it, but somebody said, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the silence. We start with a minute silence. If we can't do it, we imagine we can do it. We pretend we can do it. Like kids playing a game. We let all the rest of us go and we just be the light that is inside us. However we see it. The light of consciousness, the light of love, the light of sheer being alive, the light of our sexuality and passion. There's a flame. Thank you. We hold that light for a minute, and that light is to light the open pathways that all the beings in all the worlds may be at liberty to achieve their most intimate aspiration. One minute held by the bells at either side. Karen is the physical light holder. Each of us is our own light. Open time.
We honor the outcast, we refresh and renew the shrine, and we reclaim the goose's secret history. Most months, there is another thing that we celebrate. It might be the, it, it, it might be a saint's day, or it might be in April, it's St. George's day. Um, St. George's birthday, St. George's death day, we celebrate George and the dragon. Um, this month, at the end of January, on the 23rd of January, we celebrate the portal to Imbolc. Imbolc is on the 1st or 2nd of February, and it's an ancient ceremony. The Celts used to celebrate it, and many neo-pagans celebrate it now. It celebrates that cusp that's on the deepest of winter, just when the time starts moving from winter into spring, that very cusp, the 2nd of February, we call it Bridget's time, because the saint and goddess Bridie, Bridget, Brid, Bree, she carries lots of names, and Bridget or Bridie is the patron of this time of the year, this very early spring when we see the snowdrops start to come out, we might be knee deep in snow, so it feels like winter, but the earth is moving, the flowers are starting to come back, snowdrops and the very earliest of flowers to offer hope of the springtime yet to come. In the Christian calendar, it's called Candlemas, and that is why you will see round the open parkway shrine, round the Red Cross Mary shrine, many lights for Candlemas. Some of them have gone out, so you'll have to imagine them as virtual lights that are still alight. <laughs> Bridie, saint or goddess, is the patron of poets, Poetry, creativity. She's the patron of healing, smithcraft, the heat of the healing fires. And she is the patron of, sorry, yes, smithcraft and healing. Three. It's lucky we've got your regard with us to keep you on track. We have called a blessing and a welcome to Bridie every single January for the last 19 years. We offer a, 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 a chant, a spoken poem, which I speak and you repeat, and we do that three times over, so that makes the chant. So before we start on the next part of the ceremony, this is additional part of the ceremony. And please join me to welcome Bridget at this portal to Imbolc. And we say, Bridie, I am here. Bridie, Bridie I, am I am here. With my goose yeah, feather yeah. quill. With my goose, With my goose feather, feather quill. quill. Cool. To trace the lucent songs of the ancients. To trace the loosened songs of the ancients. Bridie, I am here. Bridie, Bridie I am here. With the chalice and snake. With the chalice and snake. To receive and submit your healing benediction. To receive and submit your healing benediction. Bridie, I am here. Bridie, I am here. With the bellows and tongs. With the bellows and tongs. I am here with the bellows and tongs. To tend your holy fire of transformation. To tend your holy fire of transformation. Bridie, I am here with your goose feather quill. Bridie, I am here with your goose feather quill. To trace the lucent songs of the ancients. To trace, to trace the, the loose songs, songs of the ancients. Bridie, I am here with the chalice and snake. 
Friday, 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 to take your, your holy fire of transformation. Bridie, I am here with my goose feather quill. Bridie, Bridie I, am I am here with my, with goose, my goose feather, feather quill. quill. To trace the lucent songs of the ancients. To trace the lucent, the lucent songs, songs of the ancients. Bridie, I am here with the chalice and snake. Bridie, Bridie I, am I am here with the chalice, chalice and snake. snake. To receive and transmit your healing benediction. To receive, to receive and, transmit and transmit your, your healing, healing benediction. benediction. Bridie, I am here with the bellows and tongs. Bridie, Bridie I, am I am here, here with, with the, bellows the bellows and tongs. And tongs. To tend your holy fire of transformation. To tend, to tend your, your holy fire of transformation. transformation. Blessings on this time of invoke and the hope that it brings you. The next ritual we are going to perform is the ritual of binding and loosing. This has got a great teaching because we do bind ourselves. But as we bind our ribbons on the gates, so we loosen ourselves as well. Every time we're letting stuff go from ourselves. Letting stuff go so that we become less of an individual person and more part of one continuity, continuum, sorry, of time. Those gone before, the living, the dead, and those yet to come. In one continuum of time, here at the gates where the two worlds meet, our time and the goose's eternity dance together in an intimate embrace. Can I introduce Di, who is going to lead us in the... <laughs> 23 ribbons. If there's more than 23 people, you'll have to practice having a virtue. We can rip up our shirts. You can if you want. I'm not taking no clothes. Jennifer's going to give you a piece of ribbon that soon we'll be able to tie to the gate. And this is the act of binding and loosing is introduced by good friend Jennifer there. It's an act of remembering, of honouring and manifesting. Take the piece of ribbon. Put into that piece of ribbon everything that you would wish to have for yourself. And we're going to say a verse together. In fact, we repeat the verse five times. And I say repeat because we can do it as a call and response. Or we can do it in our own speed as we will. Some people know it. And if you don't know it, you'll pick it up all in good time. So I'm going to start us off with a verse when we've got that piece of ribbon. And as we're talking, I will invite people to come forward, tie the ribbon onto the gate, and to convey all the blessings of what they manifested in that ribbon outwards to the outcast there and the outcast living. Thank you. Here lay your hearts. Here lay your hearts. Your flowers. Your flowers. Your book of hours. Your fingers. Your fingers. Your thumbs. Your missions. Here lay your hands. Your hopes. Your hopes. Your dreams. Your might of things. Your locks. Your keys. Your keys. Your mysteries. Here lay your hearts. Here lay your hearts. Your flowers. Your flowers. Your fingers. Your thumbs. Your mystery lungs. Here lay your hopes. Your dreams. Your might of things. Your locks. 
your keys, keys your, mysteries, your mysteries, your flowers, your, flower, your, your hearts, your, your flowers, flowers, your book your of hours, hours, your fingers, your, your, your thumbs, thumbs, your missy your mums. mums. Here hang your, your hopes, place, your dreams, your might have been, your locks, your keys, your mysteries. Book of hours. Your fingers, your thumbs. Yeah, your hearts, your flowers, your book of hours. Your fingers, your thumbs, your miss you mums. Here hang your hopes, your dreams, your might have been, your locks, your keys. Jeez. Your mysteries, flowers. Your flowers. Your book of hours. Yeah, your hearts. Your, your hearts. Your, your book of hours. Your fingers. Your thumbs. Your fingers. Your miss you mums. Your miss you mums. Here lay your hopes, your dreams, your mind dreams, your locks, keys. your keys, your mysteries. Thank you, may have Vadic offerings. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Now, as Di says, the next ritual is our sacred offerings ritual. This is when we, magical collective, steps aside, and this space here is for people to come and give short offerings it's not an open mic what we ask is people off what they're going to offer is something to do with crossbones but of course it's by their lights it's not a rule that we make we are in the liberty here um we always start with goose words since john retired john would stand here and he would simply ooze goose and we would just stand and just receive. Uh, we've been given the job to transmit some of it. So we always start and we always end with goose words. I know that Hildegard is going to offer us a song and lead us in a small ritual. Is anybody else going to offer something? Day 500, are you going to day 500? Somebody there? Somebody else with their hand in the air? No, it was day 500. Anybody over this side? Oh, yes, sorry, your name? Melissa Jones. Melissa, of course, is going to be singing. No, not today. Doing something else. If while we're going through the offerings, you suddenly just get called to offer, that's not, this is not the end of the list. If you want to stand up, then the space is here for you. So one of the things, one of the things about the goose, this the spirit of the goose who came to John Constable nearly 30 years ago now and downloaded her mystery, her Southwark mystery into his ears and out through his pen. She calls herself, she says of herself, I was born a goose of Southwark. She says she is a medieval prostitute. She also says, I am the daughter of eternity. She also says, I am mistress Southwark. Goose is a trickster. Goose is a face changer. And Goose is a time traveller. When she going... Just so don't point that to Oh, well done. Yeah. Sorry. No need to apologise. That would have been... Uh, oh, that would have been like Lucy's one when everything said when it been played. That was a thrill. So when she came to John Crow, and she was... She said... I tricked my dog John Crow when he was in his ecstasy to lend me his voice. 
to let make known my prophecy. She also explains what a time traveller she is. In one of her poems, she says, yes, I've been here before, dear, of times in chase and circumstance. I lay with Master Geoffrey at the tabard making dalliance afore wending on his pilgrimage to tell a tale of Canterbury. And I rode out be beside him as the child of Mary Overy, went riding for a vision, a vision of humanity, man, God and beast communing for one moment in eternity and the healing of the sin and the questioning divinity who ask us herself, what am I to permit such wanton misery? I'm sorry, I've forgotten the words. No, because I'm not going to find them, because it just popped into my head. I was going to do another poem altogether. So that one just popped into my head. I'm going to give you another one instead. Entombed in the shadow of Bedlam, the Imperial Museum of War, in the Garden of Peace, the Winchester geese consult with Kuan Yin and the Magdalene Hall. In the wards of Old Guy's Leaden Tower, in the Elephant and Castle Subway, they graffiti her name, she who comes to reclaim the world that was taken away. On the steps of St. George the Martyr, red-eyed and roaring, a bum did totter and sway and topple and splay and stutter the words, she is come. She is come out of Egypt by Greenwich, Upriver, the dogs to the right, along the back, black beach, around Limehouse Reach, with the city of London in sight. In cathedral, Provost may ponder if he should unbar the great door with a wink and a nod to the glory of God in the guise of an unredeemed hall. Let Bishop's Crook offer him counsel, ways and means for the door to unjam. If needs must be seen that the hall be washed clean of her sins by the blood of the Lamb, then let it be so. But then let it go. The guilt and the shame and the sin. Let go of the law that made her a whole. And then, for God's sake, let her in. Let in, let in. Let no colour of skin nor creed debar other from ceremony. Let the gong of Tibet bong out an octet with the bells of St. Mary over it. I will recite the other poem at another time. Would you like to please? Thank you, Jennifer. So I'm Hildegard. Hello to everybody. Hello. I've been here with a group of women in October with the Heathen Harlots. The Heathen Harlots is a group of women who formed, who found each other last summer in a camp, in a heathen camp. Heathens are uh, pagans who work with the North mythology. And um, they found themselves, and we're talking a lot about sex workers and the outcast dead. And um, they wrote the word slut in runes onto that person, tried to find out or, or see how people responded to it. And um, uh, they started chanting those runes. Uh, so the word slut has four runes in it, four letters, but in runes, it's S Sovilo. And uh, Sovilo is a sun rune, uh, L for Lagus. Um, and Lagus is a water rune, little doggy drinking. Um, uh, N, um, no, U is for Eurus and is um, an earth rune. And T is Tivas, is a rune for justice. And um, they, uh, and it sort of has an air quality. So without them planning to, they had those four runes uh, representing the four elements. And so they, they chanted those runes. And today you're going to chant those runes. They approached me 
uh, because I'm a singer, whether I would sing uh, write a song for them because they were talking so much about the outcast then I said you really have to use the prayer which we just done for uh, from the crossbone graveyard so I brought them here in October for them to introduce them to the crossbone graveyard and we performed a, a little ritual and this song is part of it so I will uh, teach you the runes they're very simple and um, and while you chant them, I will sing the song on top. And um, we've done it before, so you have to trust me. It's, it's going to work. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to give each uh, group, uh, each quarter, uh, a rule to chant. We practice it, and then you have to, with great confidence, chant it at the same time. So it's not like one rune and then the other. It's all of them at the same time. So this rule, this quarter is gonna chant the rune so below. I sing it to you and you sing it back to me. So it goes so below. So instead, so below. That's it. And then when we do it all together, you just keep going. So you do it in a loop. So this group is going to do La Goose. This is the water room. La Goose together. La Goose. Just keep going. La Goose. La Goose. Thank you. This is Oros. Do we have enough for Tivas? Yeah. Oros. Yep. Yeah. Earth run. Oros together. Oros. I need more earth for you. Oros. So keep going. Oros. Just keep going. More confidence. Oros. Oros. Thank you. And then this is Tivas. Tiva, Tiva, Tiva. Thank you. So the runes are writing symbols like letters from the Norse mythology, but they're not just letters. There are each rune has a, a magical meaning, and by chanting basically in runes the word slut, it becomes basically something else. It transforms and becomes something really big so we're going to ch chant i set you off you keep going i add you you keep going i add you you keep going and you, i add you and you keep going yeah okay let's try that so and keep going keep going and Tivas. Tivas. And if I make a, a simple like this, we do the softer. And then if I go like this, you make it louder. Thank you. Now I'm going to sing that song once by myself. And then I set you off like I've done it now. And we do it together. You will recognize the words. Yeah, your hearts. You flowers, you book of hours, your fingers, your thumbs, you miss you mums. You hang your hopes, your dreams, you might have been. You love your gifts, you mystery. So be low, so be low, 
Say together, whole and hearty word, slut. Slut. I did forget to tell everybody this is an act of sacred profanity. You are allowed to clap. <laughs> and I must say, thank you so much for that. We were a bit bitty, but <laughs> my goodness, what an extraordinary example of the sacred held in the profane yeah, or the profane <laughs> held in the sacred thank you whichever way around it goes thank you hildegard very yeah, much <laughs> oh it's quite excited me <laughs> would you like to come and oh i'd love to i won't be long because i know we've been standing in the middle of the street in a cold january and i normally sing just short long uh, especially I have a January song, but on the way here, I had a feeling, a little voice, you know, you can get these voices and you have to listen to these voices. Yeah. And this voice has come to tell me that I should tell Harriet's story, Harriet Lewis, the story of Harriet Lewis. And Harriet Lewis, I believe, has been haunting me for years. And it was Harriet who came to me in a dream and told me about this place and drew me to this place like a magnet. I don't know if Harriet has a connection with Crossbones. It's entirely possible that she ended up here. And this is why. Harriet Lewis was born in Guinea in the 18th century. And she was taken uh, and enslaved in Jamaica. And there she lived on a plantation. And was uh, she was a young girl when she was enslaved. And she was taken by the master to be the superintendent of all the enslaved women. And we know what that means. That means that she was educated just enough that she was able to keep the other enslaved women in check, but not enough to uh, get her freedom and to take her freedom. And she became the mistress of the master of the plantation. His name was Captain Lewis, and he brought Harriet here to the to London. And then he died of the smallpox. Um, not going to say a prayer for him. God forgive me. <laughs> um, uh, and he left her penniless in London, in a strange land. And she was an incredibly resourceful woman, and she became a high class courtesan. <laughs> She took all of Captain Lewis's connections and she turned them into soft paper. And she made so much soft paper that she bought her own brothel, 
which was not here in Southwark, but it was actually in uh, where the Guardian is, the Guardian building in King's Cross, uh, forget the name of the place, um, where many brothels were. But she was a very successful brothel owner. Um, and she uh, was quite the toast of to the town in the 18th century. She would have gone to Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens with her ladies and um, made the connections there. Um, and she paid her taxes. We have found her records of her paying her taxes. Um, but then she fell in love with a soldier and spent a lot of money on him. And her uh, employees stole from her and she refused, flatly refused to take them to, to court and ended up uh, penniless and broke in um, the, um, the prison. So, she, and she died very sadly of uh, tuberculosis and may well or in another mass unmarked grave. But I don't choose to think about her ending or her sad suffering and pain. I think she's a warrior and an incredible woman. And I've been, and I feel she's in me. Um, you know, she has been, as I say, haunting me and not letting me go. Uh, so I have written her songs and her story um, in a play. But I still feel like I can't forget her. And I just wanted you all to know about Harriet Lewis. Say her name Thank again. You. Harriet Lewis. Harriet, Harriet Lewis. Lewis. Harriet Lewis. Lewis. Harriet Lewis. Harriet Lewis. If, Harriet Lewis. Could, if you could join me in just saying a little, I have the key to her freedom here. I would just like to add Harriet to you. Okay. And say her name. Harriet Lewis. Harriet, Harriet Lewis. Lewis. God bless you. God. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Can I just see Mark's instance? We've got a couple more people to come, but I want to say thank you to the Zoom vigilers who have reminded me that we've also got another celebration to celebrate this evening. I'm not sure how many years ago it was, but we learned at the January vigil, at the Portal to Inbolt vigil, that David Bowie had died. And we immediately adopted him as the Angel of the Outcast. We traditionally sing Starman. I don't know the words to Starman. Here live, has anybody got the words in their heads to Starman? Right, we're going to carry on an experiment because on the Zoom vigil, Drew knows the words to Starman. So instead of standing here like this, Drew is going to come on in front. No, no. We'll do it afterwards. Oh, okay. The Zoom vigilers are going to do it all on their own, you miserable lot, <laughs> <laughs> and not include us. <laughs> but just to make sure we don't forget, and I don't care really how this sounds, please join in with, there's a star man waiting in the sky. <clears throat> He'd like to come and meet us. But he thinks he'll blow our minds. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He told us not to blow it because he knows it's all worthwhile. He told it. Let the children use it. Let the children use it. Let all the children use it. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a round of applause for the angel of the outcast, <laughs> David <laughs> Bowie. Now, who else have we got? Day 500 wants to give us a talk. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Day 500, ladies and gentlemen. OK. 
Okay, right, the um, day 500 bit, I'll explain that first. Um, I watched a programme on TV called History Cold Case, where they um, took out a skeleton from here and um, they forensically examined it and uh, they gave a name to the girl. Um, well, they found out she was a girl uh, using the records from the workhouse, DNA, um, burial records, workhouse records. Anyway, I got interested in that program and it pointed to here. So um, I came down here and uh, I was asked to join, um, sign a, a petition. So I did that and uh, I went back to the website a couple of weeks later. We're going back to 2010 now. And uh, when I looked on the website, I was number 500. So I adopted the day 500. So that's um, how everyone knows me. And uh, while Jenny was talking there earlier, um, I had a strange feeling come over me when I, I was over there. And uh, I was smiling and something was telling me to smile. I wanted to laugh. But um, anyway, um, the goose has wonderful ways. So anyway, I'm going to read something uh, from a little thing that um, happened in this graveyard some time back. Uh, uh, this little booklet here was published by or written by Lucy Coleman Talbot, who is now Dr. Lucy Coleman Talbot. Well done, Lucy. Um, and uh, it's called, uh, we, we Are Here, Crossbones Graveyard. Right, I'm gonna read a bit of King of the Beggars, it's called. Um, Andrew, uh, yeah. Um, Andrew, Andrew Whiston, his name is. Andrew was locally known as the Little Andrew. As little Jimmy, he was a paraplegic man with dwarfism. He wore a distinctive hat. Um, yeah, he wore a distinctive hat. Where am I? I've lost myself now. And was uh, said to be a real character who could be incredibly difficult, particularly when in drink. He, he raveled. He travelled each day across Blackfriars Bridge to gather arms and held his title King of the Beggars, a, a name he was reportedly proud of. Andrew was an alcoholic and died in consequence of drink, uh, from excessive drinking. Life must have been very hard for him. Andrew was 16 inches tall and he used a small cart and crutches to move about. This cost him money, which would have been a great expense for him. Although his death was uh, reported to the night watchman at for St. Saviour's at around 11 o'clock, the other residents of Williams Court refused to give up his body, claiming that this was, this was due to Andrew dying <coughs> in debt of his month's rent. However, it soon came to light that they had been offered the sum of 100 pounds for his dead body for the purpose of dissection in consequence of its extraordinary formation. After much difficulty, the night constable did manage to retrieve Andrew's corpse from the house on the grounds that no relatives were present. Today, you will find a coffin bearing Andrew's name and a replica of his cards. In life, Andrew had nothing uh, in death, but was objectful and seen as hot commodity. This alarming disparity represents the albeit treatment that many disabled people will experience today. Following the inquest, Andrew, Andrew was was conveyed to St. Saviour's burial ground and interred in a grave, dug 14 feet in depth from the surface, um, over which were placed three other coffins in order to secure it against the resurrection men who were anxious to have 
the courts to dispose of. There were three other parish funerals recorded for that day. The location of these burials is specified. It cannot be inferred by the number that they were buried at crossbones for that reason. Those three people were James Harvey, aged 54, from Red Cross Street, buried on the 7th of April, 1826. Elizabeth Marks, aged 54, of Union Street, buried on the 7th of April, 1826. William Walters, aged 58, from the workhouse, buried on the 7th of April, 1826. And here ends my piece of, uh, of this uh, document here. Very Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much. And the other reason why I've come here is uh, my son passed away 12 years ago and his picture is on the uh, on the gate there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. You can manage? No, of course you can manage. They're managing for 100 years. Thank you, Dave. Dave and I share um, share a very important thing, very moving thing. Both Dave's son and my son died. They are both held on the gates here. They're both smiling into the Paradise Garden. They are in eternity while we are still in time. It's a very close connection with is there anybody else want to share in that case? Oh, there is a person. It's, it's a five-finger glove. Oh, it's a two-finger glove. Yeah, I thought you okay. want to say yeah. it at the end. Oh, not that. There's Something else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I just felt really cool to just say a quick thing about a big thing. When Jennifer was talking, I haven't got any prepared. It's not going to be. They were amazing, whatever. I just wanted to say, as Jennifer was talking earlier about the stories and lives that are buried here and that are hidden, all of the people around the world whose stories are being buried and hidden from us today are fully disseminated to. So, so from the children in the making of phones and mining cobalt, from all the children that we're now aware of buried from the rubble, rubble in Gaza, to all the stories that we're not even told about in the years to grow in Sudan and in the Niger. So I just wanted to to feel some solidarity with, with that. And it feels like this is the place where, where we can do that. And I absolutely loved how the lady talked about Harriet Lewis and focused our mind on that, on that beautiful key and freedom. And I just invite you to do that and focus on the lights. But we, if we have the courage to see what's happening around the world, sometimes in our name, then, then I believe that is a necessary path for freedom, for, for keys for many other people. So I just wanted to, to say that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It's very much indeed. <laughs> Last call? Yeah, we have to make an effort when we've got our gloves on, don't we? <laughs> now, all the world knows, and the world may abhor, but the world cannot unmake poetry. God's actor is bedfellow here with God's whore in the sacred heart of God's liberty. Come trickster, shaman, prophet and fool, speaking in tongues of the mystery. Let all men contend, but God defend the lineaments of my liberty. Come snake and whistle and rattle and drum, come open me cavern in jubilee, come open me tomb to rattle and boom and let the bells ring in the liberty. Come Christian, come Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, let each to his own true divinity. Let even the blind material mind walk their own hallowed path in liberty. 
But seek not to find bind the visions you find when speaking in tongues of the mystery. When naming the parts, don't miss the heart, the heart of my holy liberty. Shortly before the storm hits us, we are going to close our ceremony, our vigil, and while Di leads us, like I said, we reclaim everything. We reclaim gin. This was back in the day when it was called Madam Jennifer. Um, Penny a pint, drunk in a day, blind in a fortnight. It's what the poor people used, like people's crack today, to take the pain away of just pure living. We reclaim the gin and we use it as our sacred fluid to seal us in. So we are in with the living, the dead, those and yet to be. And Di is going to lead us in our closing blessings. I am. It'll give you great pleasure to do so. And thanks again for the offer things that we all learned a lot today, they were very well received. In order that we can make the circle seal us into our space, I've asked people to come a little bit closer, please, because in a moment, I'm going to ask you to come close to the gates themselves and touch the gates. If you can't touch the gates, you can touch a person with touching the gates. So we're all connected, connected and sealed and ready to offer our blessings. And I invite you to speak with me. Light. Light. Health. Health. Happiness. 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 Open, Open pathways. Open pathways. Light. Health. 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 Happiness. 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 Open pathways. Open pathways. Open pathways. Health in the body. Health in the body. Peace in the spirit. Peace in the spirit. Love in the heart. Love in the heart. Health in the body. Health in the body. Peace in the spirit. Love in the heart. Love in the heart. Is this that we wish? Is this that we wish? For ourselves, for our friends and family, for all our siblings, for all our siblings, and the crow, the goose and the crow, for all humanity, and for all humanity. It is this that we wish. Is this that we wish? For ourselves, for our friends and family, for all our siblings, for the goose and the crow, and for all humanity. May it be so. May it be so. May you never be hungry. Goose, may you never be hungry. May you never be thirsty. Goose, may you never be thirsty. May your spirit fly free. Goose, may your spirit fly free. So she does, everybody. And so she does. Good night, everyone. 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 Good night, before we go, a couple of things, a couple of little pieces of information to give. Thank you, William. Spot on. Um, Glenn's going to come around with a with a pirate hat. If you've got any change in your pockets, please drop a few coins in there. That'll go for um, virtual objects and for um, the things that we need. Gin, <laughs> gin, gin, gin. Yeah. Um, Sue's has got an announcement. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Do you want to come forward here? Oh, yeah. All I was just going to say is I um, do walking tours and I've started writing one around here. And actually, what I said today was really serious. My tours are, are funny, uh, actually. So if you, I just thought I'd like to tell people here that I'm doing one sort of around here. Its theme is money <laughs> and sort of debt. And I'm doing a few like for friends and family first. So I thought if anyone here. Um, an early one. I would love to like invite you. Very interesting. How much is it? Well, I'm for the moment. I'm going to just try them out because they're new. So I'll just be saying, "Come along," and if you particularly want to give me some money, I will. Be, <laughs> but you don't have to. And also, your presence would be nice. So you you can come and be a pedestrian with me, or should I say, come and be a pedestrian. Ah. <laughs> Pedestrian. Okay, no one enjoyed that. How do we, yeah, find, how do we find out about the suicide? If I had Sarah, I'd give you one. Yeah. So you're going to have to come up and say hello to me at the end if you want to. Come, or I come, can maybe... we'll come and catch you and you'll tell yeah, us. Give us the yeah, exactly. exactly. Catch Thank you, you if you're doing your tours after and afterwards. Next exactly. month, yes. Um, we will advertise in the newsletter. Okay. 
Natalie and myself run a newsletter for the Vigil and All Things Crossbones. It's called Vigilante. Very clever, not mine. <laughs> um, if you'd like to join that, please afterwards give your name to Natalie and your e address. Um, we won't contact you apart from that, but we will give you as much information. Please step within the lines of death. I completely <laughs> forgot to tell you, these lines are called the lines of death because if you're on the inside, you're safe. And if you're on the outside, you are not necessarily. You'll remember that for next month. Okay, so vigilante to Natalie, and we'll advertise Susan. Was it Susan? Susan. Sue's um, walks, and now Dyer's got a, a last night. Yeah, just quick one thing, I won't keep you, and I haven't, I haven't fact got a flyer here. There's a couple of us running a uh, workshop, which is kind of what it was tenuously related, I suppose, the connection once being death and mortality. We've got a death cafe and a little workshop about pl planning the best possible death. Um, that is in the Electric Elephant Saturday coming. So please take a leaflet and pass it on. It'd be really nice if people could see people there, yeah? As I say, Jen's going to pass the hat around. Um, really nice to see everybody here. Don't hurry off, but do be safe. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Sorry, sorry. There we go. Hello, everyone. <laughs> does anybody want to, before we go from here, from the Zoom and from Facebook, does anybody on Zoom want to offer anything? Drew, do you want to sing more Starman or are you happy? Thank you, Francis. Shall we do more Starman? Lovely you here. Yeah, we could do that. Do you know the words? I've got the words in the I chat. I have them in front of me, yes. I put them in the chat for people who don't know them. If you if you want to sing along with Drew, we could have a little sing along, couldn't we? I think there's still people. There's people on Facebook watching, so you join in as well, Facebook. You might have to find your own words though. <laughs> Actually, I could just quickly put it into Facebook. Go on. I'll just quickly put it in because I can. Oh, I can't copy them. You'll, you'll just have to find it, Facebook. Sorry, I yeah. can't copy them from here. You have to Google it like I did. Mm. Go on then. Lead us in, Drew. Four, three, two, one. Didn't know what it time it was. was his eyes were low. I leaned back on, on my, my radio. radio. Oh. Was lying down some rock and roll, a song he said. Then a loud sound did seem to say, Hey, come back like a slow voice on a way. The face, there were no DJ, that was Cosy. Cosy, make a there's a star man waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He told us not to blow it because he knows it's all worthwhile. He told me, let the children lose it. Let the children use it. Let all the children boogie. Do you want to carry Unless you want to do the da da, the, the la 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 la. The oh, end. I've got more verses. Yeah. I know we've all got more verses, but I didn't want to go on that long. <laughs> Drew, giving up I halfway have to through. I someone so I on you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, that's far out. Out, so you out. heard him too. Switch, Switch on, on the TV. TV. We may pick, pick him up, up on channel two. two. Look out, Look out your window, window. I, I can see, see his light. light. If, if we can, can sparkle, sparkle, he may land the night. Don't, Don't tell your papa, papa or he'll get locked to the sun in fright. There's a star waiting in the sky. 
He liked to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. There's a star, man waiting in the sky. He's told us not to blow it, because he knows it's all a lie. He told me, let the children lose it. Let the children use it. Let all the children do it. Star man waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He told us not to blow it. He knows it's all a lie. He told me, let the children lose it. Let the children use it. Let all the children do it. La 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 Montana says, fabulous fun and honouring. Thank you. I think David Bowie would be very proud of us. So we've done very well for our <laughs> outcast angel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Facebook, for being here. I'm going happy to stop in the... bulk, everyone. Oh, yes. Happy in bulk. A time of pain. Oh, happy yes, that's the, right. The tribes people, you know, before the agricultural year started, they used to plan out their fields and they used to also plan out battles with local <clears throat> that was to come for the year ahead yeah planning time is here yeah. so that's the thing to do so happy yeah. planning yes, and happy involved happy candle mass happy st bridget's day happy bridget's yeah. day happy all those things so happy, happy. yeah good planning good thank plan. you everyone i'm going to stop thank the facebook live stream bye bye facebook and i'm going to stop the recording bye bye recording <laughs>